Today we're going to talk about the difference between the eye contact going from the outside in or the inside out, and how it relates to sexual energy, intimacy, and passion. Okay, our magnetism. All right. So here we go. Eye contact. Why do we have to look each other in the eyes? Uh, people don't talk like this all the time. Why well, in this Clay Bank studio, you're always just right here in this space, and you can't move, and you can't do anything, and you got to stay right here in this space. People don't talk like this. Okay. Well, here, here's the thing. Last week we discussed what the deal was with eye contact and intimacy. I don't know if I shared this with you or not, but I, I, I was uh, in, a, in a conversation with a body language specialist. And the body language specialist says that you can tell if a person is attracted to you. Let's say you're meeting somebody or you're dating somebody and you don't know how they feel about you or not, by whether or not their eyes will dilate. Hmm. When someone is interested in another person, their eyeballs will dilate because intuitively they want to bring in as much information as they can about you. When they don't have interest in you, their eyes will become smaller. The pupils will close because they will not desire to have that information come into you. Now look at that. This is a biophysiological reactive behavior, which means it's involuntary. You're not in control of this. Your body knows to produce more eye contact when it has an interest in something, as opposed to if it doesn't. Isn't that interesting right there? Okay, what happens when people are really into each other? Sue was kind of tapping on it. The word that I'm going to discuss today is, we get to a certain place with intimacy, where it's just like we open ourselves up so much to somebody, we're so into it. We've been through a few of the, the dinners already, and we've gotten past the awkwardness, and we still like the person, and they still like us, and so what happens? We go to the game. <laughs> and you're just gazing and so here I am I'm yours here I am I'm yours and you're just in this gaze it like transcends eye contact to a whole nother level but what happens when you get with that person you've spent time with them and they start to piss you off or upset you and you get into a big argument with them that just is a, a downright brawl I don't want anything to do with you yeah your clothes off. <laughs> Speak to the hand. Get out of my sight. Leave the room. Shut the door. Hop in a car. Drive away. How far away from you can I get, let alone eye contact? So those would be the two opposite extremes in where we are with the intimacy that we're sharing with another person. Okay? Now we got that. The intimacy is coming from inside. What's happening in here, what we're sharing, how we're carrying, there are all these different things that we do to get to that place of intimacy with somebody. Real intimacy with somebody has to arrive over time by unfolding and pulling back and learning and information and unfolding and pulling back. Well, we're professionals in this industry. We have to get intimate with somebody very quick and do something that isn't that natural. Well, if you're a trained professional working with a trained professional, your instruments have been trained to do this because this is what we do and it isn't an issue. I've got wives all over town. And when I see them, I've worked on jobs with them. Here, we've, we've done auditions. We've been on projects, whatever. And we say, hey, hey, and it's just like, ah, great, great, good luck. See you. And I don't see them for another five years because that's just our business. You know, that, that's, just, that's just the way that it is. And any of you that have ever worked closely with anybody on a project, you know, you, you've developed those relationships and you have those relationships. And when you see them again, they will be there. That's the professional level of this. Well, getting to that level, remember the eye contact is the byproduct of the intimacy. It's the byproduct of the passion. It's the byproduct of the sexual energy. The eye contact is the byproduct. So then why do we have to stare at each other in the seats? Because until you get to that point, you can work the intimacy from the outside in by forcing you to look at somebody. So you're not intimate with this person, you're dodging them, you're over here, you're over here. Look at them. Okay, I'm looking at them. What's in their eyes? Well, I gotta look deeper. Become an emotional investigator. Sadness, happiness, anger, fear, love. What's going on in their spirit and in their soul? And you're doing more and more and more of that. Now that starts to chisel away and chisel away, get past your stuff to your place of intimacy where you're able to open that up. So they, they, they kind of work both ways. 
The intimacy works from the outside in and the inside out through the eye contact. One being a tool you're using to help develop intimacy, the other being a reflective mechanism showing you the level of intimacy. Following me? Okay, now, back to the sexual energy and the intimacy. This power plant that we have, our sexual drive, again, we are talking about the energy, not the act of fornication. And it is so important that we do not confuse that. Sexual energy is not an act of fornication in context of the conversation that I'm having with you right now. It is a power plant. Look at it that way. It's a power force that we have that through our social systems and different teachings and trainings, we have learned to pervert it and corrupt it and misuse it and abuse it and do all these other things. I'm not addressing that. I'm addressing the pure place of power where Napoleon Hill talks about your magnetism stems from. You can't be any good in business or as a salesperson without having access to this sexual energy. Isn't that interesting? I find that very, very interesting. Okay, so we're opening up this can of worms. This week your assignment is going to be even more interesting. So this can of worms now is your sexuality and how it equates to your intimacy and how it equates to your passion like JR just shared with us, that information gives us power. I'm talking to you consciously and subconsciously about this place to exploit this holy ground of who, my sexual energy, that place of sex that many people have buried up and have it in a box or other people have it out there spread all over the place, whatever. If it's in a box, it's like somebody giving you an amazing gift that's just left in its packaging for so long that eventually whatever's in there isn't any good. You ever do that? You ever get something you value so much you just hide it away? You find it years later and it's no good because it dry rotted or something? Have you ever had that happen? Okay. Nice piece of chocolate. It happens to me all the time. I'll get some really good chocolate and I'll put it in the back of the drawer and I get to it like, you know, months later and it's got the white stuff on it and everything. It's like, oh man. I saved a bottle of wine. It was so cool. I say I carried this bottle of wine with me through like three moves and, and then eventually it fell off the shelf and broke. <laughs> I literally put my put my hand on the floor and was putting it on my ten feet to taste it. I can't believe it. <laughs> you know what they say, use it or lose it, right? Um, that's what happens to some people's sexual energy. It gets boxed up and stuck in a corner to the point where even when it comes out, it doesn't even function. <laughs> you know? A healthy sexual energy is not perverse. We're not talking about being overly promiscuous. We're not discussing you being raunchy. We're talking about having a healthy sexual energy and a healthy sexual drive that's kept in order where it's not now manifesting into something else. I'm talking about this being part of your arsenal of tools as an, as, as an artisan. We need that. You have to have that. And you can't be afraid of it. Sometimes we look at it like that science project in the back of the refrigerator. You ever have that experience? I just got rid of a few of those today. Yeah. It's that brown bag in the back corner recesses of the refrigerator and it's just in there and it's in there and it's in there and at some point you go, crap, what's in there? And you don't even want to open it. Because if you, you know, you don't want to open it because it's going to, that mole crap's going to yeah. jump on you or whatever. So you're just like, yeah, you just throw it away. Yeah, you guys with me on this? You put okay. it in the container, yeah. Well, sometimes we don't want to tap into these areas within ourselves because we're afraid that if we do, we don't know what's in there and what's going to jump out. Mm -hmm. So we just leave it in the back of the fridge, if you will. That's not going to help you. You got to open it. You got to let it stink. You got to look at the ugliness of it, whatever it is. And it might not even be that bad. But whatever it is, you've got to open it up, you've got to let it out, and start dealing with it, and get it to the point where it can be resuscitated, and it can function in a healthy manner. 